All right. Hi, everybody. So I'm Raphael. Uh, I work for IBM. I work for IBM Research, and I design. Uh, I design and I research, and I want to talk uh, about the core of my research work uh, around cognitive experience design. And really, the first foray into it, um, something called conversational agents. I'm sure many of you in here are familiar with conversational agents. Amazon Alexa, Apple Siri. Uh, we even have platforms for them now, bots for Messenger, uh, Slack bots. And they've been rising almost exponentially in the past year or so. And so the conversational UI, as we call it, looks something like this today. iPhone users in here, the screen probably looks familiar, right? You ask Siri a question, you get some responses back. Um, they're usually presented in a list. Well, if there's one major takeaway I want you guys to walk away with is that not every voice or text interaction is a conversation. And so the work that I've been doing with my team has been trying to infuse conversation into conversational agents, chatbots. So I want to give a high level overview of how they work today. Um, so typically in a voice-based system, you have speech to text, you have natural language understanding, you have dialogue management, and you have text to speech. Well, speech to text, text to speech, they've been around for a while. They, we still got a ways to go, but they're pretty robust. Natural language understanding has been um, improving quite a bit due to, due to all the advents in machine learning algorithms. But dialogue management, that's a hard problem. And, and why is it hard? Well, I want you to pause and think about the conversations that you've had in the past 24 hours. They're completely open. They've probably spanned a number of different topics. As a designer, a conversational interface is your worst nightmare. Uh, you could say, a user could say anything to a chatbot, an agent on the other end. So when you think about it, if you have a very narrow AI, and the narrow scope of what your chatbot knows, that's that's actually really hard, because you're trying to manage all of these different topics. Um, and those topics translate to different, different, API, different API calls, which take time, right? Human conversation is also incredibly complex. It's nonlinear, and different people have different ways of speaking and interacting. But the question that we've been trying to ask is how do we rethink conversation in the context of conversational agents? And so I've been teaming up with actually a sociologist, a conversation analyst. Yes, there is a field, conversation analysis. And I'm not going to go over this in great depth, but what you can see is that there's actually a model of conversation. Ordinary conversation, service encounters, counseling conversations, they all have a model. Uh, and we can start to use that model and infuse them into AI systems to actually have more human-like conversations. So what I want to highlight, this is a conversation that's actually finding a restaurant recommendation. What you see is the base action pair. Now, that's the meat of a conversation. So this is something that you might say to Siri or Alexa, hey, I need a restaurant within walking distance. OK, Mignana's is located at 4th and Winchester. That's not really how a conversation works, though. You have a lot of things called dependencies. You might have repairs, like hearing troubles or understanding troubles, which you can see there. And then you have some form of a sequence closing where you've actually achieved mutual understanding. And so really, the core thing with creating a conversational system or a chatbot is to achieve mutual understanding, achieve understanding on behalf of the user and also on behalf of the agent or the system. So my team has been applying a lot of these principles and practices and, and thinking about different modalities, whether it's voice or text. And I want to share with you about seven best practices that we've come up with for text-based chatbots, especially in the context of mobile. First, you want to make sure you onboard your users. Let them know that they're talking to an AI system, and then help them out give them suggestions of the types of things that they can ask or say. Second, you want to use progressive disclosure. And what I mean by this is if 
a user is asking for a restaurant recommendation, you don't want to bombard them with a bunch of questions right away. You kind of want to ease the information out of them. First, ask what kind of food they're in the mood for, and then ask them how far they're willing to go. Give feedback. Chances are you're going to need to make an API call. When you do, let the user know that it's going to take a moment. The worst thing that a user can feel is ghosted by an AI system. Show, don't tell. So this is really uh, modality specific. Leverage the medium that you're working with. Uh, when, when it makes sense, serve up rich media content. Here, we're showing directions for how to get to a restaurant. It might make sense to actually show images, show video, right? If the user is asking for food recommendations and the agent's describing menu items, maybe show it with a photo. Leverage history. Now, this is something that's really nice with a conversational agent. Because you have a pretty structured way of interaction, you can actually add breakpoints to a chat log. So you can go from discovery of finding a restaurant to actually placing an order. And this is really nice because as the user scrolls back through the history, they can see these breakpoints or landmarks. Give your bot personality. For those of you in this space, this is a really great time to let your brand shine. Um, make sure that you give a personality to your bot. Even though users will know that they're interacting with an AI system, they're going to assign a personality to your bot no matter what. And fail gracefully. You're going to run into a situation where the user is going to either try to play with, the, play with the AI or ask something that you just don't know. So say you don't know, and then provide an option for what you do. All right, so I know I buzzed through these relatively quickly, but a lot of these, the information, a conversation and analysis primer, some of these practices and principles we've published, um, they're public facing. You can access them at ibm.biz slash conversational UX. And come and find me afterwards and learn about how my team is asking questions and trying to solve problems around user experience and AI at large. I'm proud of a, part of a broader team in research called Rethink Enterprise. And feel free to email me as well. Enjoy the rest of the festival. Thanks, everybody.